Chapter 4 The Effects of the British Rule in India The British East India Company brought nearly the whole of India under its control during the period from 1757 to 1856. In order to consolidate their rule, the British set up a new system of governance in India. We shall study it in this lesson. Dual Government in 1765, Robert Clive introduced the system of dual government in Bengal. The East India Company took over the function of revenue collection. The function of maintaining peace and order was left in the hands of the Nawab of Bengal. This system is called dual government. The ill effects of this system of dual government began to surface after a while. The company officers pocketed the amount collected as revenue from the common people. Many British merchants were envious of the East India Company as it had been granted the monopoly of trade with India. There was a lot of criticism in England against the governance of India by the East India Company. The British Parliament, therefore, passed certain important acts to regulate the company's administration in India. Acts passed by Parliament According to the Regulating Act of 1773, the Governor of Bengal was raised to the position of Governor-General. The Governor-General was given controlling powers over the policies of the Bombay, Mumbai and Madras Presidencies. A four-member committee was appointed to assist the Governor-General. Pitt's India Act was passed in 1784. According to it, a permanent board of control was instituted to regulate the company's administration in India. The board was authorized to issue directives regarding the governance of India to the company. In 1813, 1833 and 1853, British Parliament passed acts introducing changes in the governance of the company. In this way, the British government established its indirect control over the administration of the company. With the advent of the British power, a new administrative system was set up in India. The civil service, the military, the police force and the judiciary were the main pillars of the British administration in India. The civil service In order to consolidate their rule in India, the British needed to organize the civil services. Lord Cornwallis organized the civil service system. It became an important organ of the British administration. He laid down a rule that a civil servant should not be engaged in private trade. In order to ensure this, he raised the salaries of the company's officers. For the convenience of administration, the territory under the control of the British was divided into districts. The collector was the head of the district administration. Revenue collection, administration of justice and the maintenance of peace and order were his responsibilities. Officers were recruited to the Indian civil services through a competitive examination. The military and police forces the military was to protect the Indian territories under the control of the British, to secure new ones and to quell any uprisings in India against the British. The function of the police force was to maintain law and order in the country. The British introduced a new judicial system in India based on the one in England. Each district had a civil court for conducting civil cases and a criminal court for trying criminal cases. High courts were established to review the judgments delivered by these district courts. Equality before law Previously, there were different laws in different regions of India. While dispensing justice, differentiation was made in accordance with the caste. The Indian Law Commission, established under the chairmanship of Lord Macaulay, codified laws. These codified laws were applied uniformly all over India. The British established the principle of common law. 
but the new judicial system was not without its faults. Under it, there were separate laws for Europeans and separate courts for their trials. Common people did not understand the new laws. For them, justice was very expensive. The trials continued for years together. Economic Policies of the British India had been subjected to foreign aggressions since ancient times. Many of these aggressors settled in India permanently. They assimilated the Indian culture. Although they ruled here, they did not introduce any fundamental changes in the economy of India. This was not the case with the British. England was a modern country. As a result of the Industrial Revolution, capitalist economy prevailed in England. In India too, the British brought in an economic system to nurture that economy. This resulted in financial gains for England, but Indians were subjected to economic exploitation. Land Revenue Policy Before the beginning of the British rule, the village economy in India was self-sufficient. All the needs of the villagers were fulfilled locally with the help of agriculture and other industries. Land revenue was the chief source of income of the state. During the period before the British rule, land revenue was assessed according to the condition of crop. If the crop failed, the land revenue was waived. The revenue was collected mainly in the form of grains. Even if there was a delay on the part of the peasants, their land was not confiscated. In order to increase the revenue, the British made some important changes in the revenue system. They measured the land and fixed the revenue on the basis of the area. They made it compulsory for the peasants to pay land revenue in cash at a fixed time. They made a rule that failure to pay land revenue in time would result in the land being confiscated. The system that the British used to collect land revenue differed from region to region in India. Peasants were exploited everywhere in India. Effects of the New Land Revenue System The new land revenue system adversely affected the rural life in India. In order to pay the land revenue, peasants began to sell their farm produce at whatever price they could get. Traders and the middlemen began to buy agricultural produce at an unreasonably low price. At times, the peasants were forced to mortgage their lands with the village money lenders in order to pay the land revenue. Thus, peasants became debtors. If they failed to pay their debts, they had to sell their lands. The government, the landlords, the money lenders, the merchants, all of them exploited the peasants. Commercialization of Agriculture Previously, peasants mainly produced grains. The grain was used either for their own household consumption or for meeting the needs of the village. The British began to encourage the production of cash crops such as cotton, indigo, tobacco, tea, etc. This shift of emphasis towards the production of profit-yielding cash crops rather than food grains is known as the commercialization of agriculture. Reforms in Transport and Communication The British provided modern facilities of transport and communication for the purposes of administrative convenience and growth of trade. A highway connecting Calcutta, Kolkata with Delhi was built. In 1853, a train began to ply between Mumbai and Thane. In the same year, the British started a telegraph system in India. This facilitated the communication between the major cities and military centers in India. The British also introduced the postal service. All these reforms had far-reaching effects on the social life in India. Communication between people belonging to different regions in the country improved greatly. This helped in strengthening a sense of unity among them. Decline of Traditional Industries the British government used to levy heavy duties on goods exported from India to England. On the other hand, the duty on goods imported into India from England was far too less. The goods coming from England were factory-made and therefore 
they could be produced there on a large scale and at a low price. The Indian artisans found it difficult to compete with these inexpensive goods. As a result, some of the industries in India had to be closed down. Many of the Indian artisans lost their livelihood. Growth of new industries in India Indian entrepreneurs could not come forward in large numbers because of the lack of government support, lack of capital and of experience of management. But there were some Indians who overcame these difficulties and succeeded in laying the foundation of Indian industries. Gawasji Nanabhoy started the first cotton textile mill in Mumbai in 1853. The first jute mill was started in 1855 at Rishra in Bengal. Jamshedji Tata established Tata Iron and Steel Company's steel producing plant at Jamshedpur in 1907. Gradually, coal, metal, sugar, cement and chemical industries were also started in India. Social and Cultural Impact In the 19th century, a new age had dawned in Europe based on the values of humanism, rationalism, democracy, nationalism and liberalism. It was but natural that these changes in Europe would evoke some echoes in India. In order to run the administration, the British wanted to get acquainted with the Indian society. For this purpose, they started studying the Indian traditions, history, literature, arts, music and even the local flora and fauna. Sir William Jones, a British officer, founded the Asiatic Society of Bengal in Kolkata in 1784. Max Müller, a profound German thinker, was a great scholar of the religions, languages and history of India. The example set by these people made the newly educated Indians aware that they, too, should study their own religion, history and tradition. The English enacted many laws in India. Lord Bentick passed an act in 1829 prohibiting the practice of Sati. In 1856, Lord Dalhousie passed an act allowing widow remarriage. These acts were complementary to social reforms. In order to run the administration, the British were in need of Indians who had received British education. In 1835, on the recommendations of Lord Macaulay, Western education was introduced in India. Through the new system of education, Indians were introduced to new Western ideas, modern reforms, science and technology. Universities were established at Mumbai, Madras, Chennai, and Kolkata in 1857. The middle class which received Western education led the social renaissance movement in India.